I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Press play, Jeff. Yep. And in three. And shoot. And that's. It's June 7th, 2019. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Interminable Links, episode number uh, 515. And good morning, everybody. Hi. Yeah. I've been, hey. I've been up since five. Not AM, PM. Just, just think of that. Yes. Yeah, anyways. Well. Hey, but folks, uh, previously we used to do this like the other way around, where like at the end of the month we would do this, but now we're doing it at the beginning of the following month. So. I mean, we could do it at the end of the month. We just chose not to. I suppose. Anyways. <laughs> it's that time. That shade. I don't know. Let's move on. Uh, I'm calling this one Night Shift and Dragons. That's my uh, uh, best uh, impersonation of Cookie from you. Cookie? Yeah. Totally caught oh it. <laughs> How did I do? Uh, yeah. was it good? Was it, was it you good? did really good because I was like, wait, I know that voice, tone, yeah. imitation, something. Oh, and apparently it's July, not June. Yeah, it uh, is. Philip is right. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm pretty sure he. I can't. Absolutely remember, but I probably did say June seventh. It is July seventh. <laughs> you did. I just just let it go. I mean, speaking of which, now in this in theory here, let's let's talk about a relativity thing here. Oh, good I'm God! Sit back, relax. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about something that's kind of theoretical. Uh, to be fair, but we are not have enough vodka for this. Go ahead. To be fair. <laughs> Relatively speaking, I'm still doing this on Saturday while you guys are doing it on Sunday at the same time. That's that's great. Mm-hmm. It's still July. Yeah. And I'm doing this on the 6th. <laughs> and you're doing this on the 7th. Both in July, but we're a day apart. Because, you know, I'm still in the night. You've shift. been up since 5 p.m. Yeah. 5 p.m. Speaking of night shift. 5 p.m. 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 On the six, and I haven't gone to bed. Okay. So because I haven't gone to bed and, and well, slept, you could, it, you could, the could, day could. hasn't reset for me. So okay. relatively speaking, okay. I'm on the six. You're on the seventh. Anyways, so that's still going on. The night shift thing. I'll probably have to switch that up during the night. The the next switch over, uh, which should be in September, uh, mainly because in October, uh, I'm going to be out of work for a week. Like, out from work. Not, like, mm. I'll be fired for a week or anything. I'll just not work. be going to work. I'll have those off. Because uh, my sister's getting married. Uh, uh, the first week of, of October. And uh, just got an email from my mom saying, hey, go to the men's warehouse and get measured. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Yep. And uh, I kind of look at suits. Uh, might have to get some input in my si- from my sister about, like... What type of suits? I'm wondering if I could come in purple. You think I could so pull I have out a purple? Question. Do you think they would have a purple suit at Men's Warehouse? Um, probably not. I mean, they might have like a. I'm gonna say mauve, like a maybe oh, like a. They might have a nice, really dark eggplant aubergine. Yeah, yeah. something I mean, along those lines. I, mean, I don't know if they'll have like worst case a, scenario. I could just like like get a. a, a 
uh, have a purple tie and a purple or uh, in a purple pocket square or something. Have like you that. even found out what your sister's colors are for the wedding? Well, so far, here's here's the report from my mom. I just got it today. She says, I think the groomsmen will be in a gray suit, but I don't think she wants you and Kevin in the same suits. So right now, I don't really know what she wants from any of us. So <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I don't know what she wants from any of it. <laughs> Part of that whole email. It's like, I don't know what she wants. Sounds like <laughs> wedding to me. <laughs> so far, so, as I'm looking on um, the website, Miss website, I'm not seeing purple as an option. As an option, I'm seeing a lot of purple like ties and handkerchiefs. And, and so shit. I might might have not to. Like, might have to stick to to like the accoutrement instead of the actual. Maybe I can get a purple Correct. shirt, and then it's like the that, jacket and pants. You could probably get like a lilac or a. Um, I mean, it um, doesn't have to be light. It could be a dark one too. I'm just giving like options. Yeah, I know. there's cause, like. It just means I need to go shopping, and I wish I had tan with me. Because tan would make make me look fabulous while still being me. I love tan to death. If you have not okay. seen Queer Eye, like the Netflix version, that not the Which Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, but the Queer Eye, uh, one, have tissues, and two, uh, I, I get very uh, awkward watching all the segments with, um, what's his name? The culture guy. I can't tell you the sake of his name. Anyways. Um, I got nothing. I don't know. <laughs> I get all awkward with, with, when the culture comes up, but everything else is fabulous. Uh, I even like adore Jonathan, and usually he's not my type of guy, but I love him to death. Um, anyways, <laughs> side note. Uh, in addition, my uh, Dungeons and Dragons campaign that I was playing in ended. Aww. To then go into one that I'm I'm DMing. Oh, so I have control. So the camera can't see it, but to the sides of it right now, I have post-it notes with each of the characters names and one that says enemies and it has their AC, their save DC, their perception, their uh, investigation insight passes. So I have ready access to all that information. (laughs) Ooh. I also uh, have been going crazy because I've been designing some personalized <laughs> magic items. <laughs> nice. Uh, some of them aren't actually personalized. I just changed the names and remade them. Just because I didn't have uh, any ideas on to fill it in. But anyways, that's how I'm doing. So... And uh, we've been talking about even at work. Uh, we've been talking about starting a D and D campaign. So, Ooh. might be Tuesday nights after midnight because that's when uh, <laughs> the last person gets off work. Uh, we'll pop over to uh, one of my coworkers' apartment and uh, play some Dungeons and Dragons. Also, mm. also, what have I been watching throughout the day? Dungeons and Dragons stuff. <laughs> of course. Like, it's, it's been just a series of uh, RPs, uh, role-playing game stuff. So I'm, I'm just currently obsessed. That's why it's like Night Shifts and Dragons. Cool. But that's what's been going on with me. Hey, Damon, what's been going on with you? Um, or sure. what's been going in so, I so- don't know. Okay, good. I'm still not muted. Okay, cool. That makes me feel better. Um, first things <laughs> first. Um, so I've talked about work a lot, a lot, especially these past couple of episodes. Um, some news. Karamo. His name is I, Karamo. Hmm? Hmm? Karamo. That's ah. the name of the culture guy in Queer. Ah, got it. He's, he's, he's a really cool person. It's awkward uh-huh. anyways moving on <clears throat> you Anywho. um so i have found out 
that I have, for, for lack of a better term, through process of elimination, but, you know, I did apply for the job, everything. But the process of elimination, I do have a job. Yay! Um, um, Wait, the, you've had a job. Yes, I'm, I'm going to get, let me get to it. I'll get to it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look, this is the headline. Let me get to the article. Yeah. So essentially how it works is um, we were told back in June that um, my position would technically be ending. My regular position would be ending in September. Um, however, they, because we're transitioning to a third party, blah, 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 bullshit. Anyway. However, there was going to be a state team. There was one position available um, along with my with the manager um, to be on the state team because every if you move out to a third party, you have to have a state team to kind of be there and guide and et cetera, et cetera. Um, of the four of us that are technically Macy's employees, oops, I said the job number, anyway, uh, employees and um still with the company, um, only two of us applied, me and one of my coworkers, um, Lauren. Um, the other two had decided to go ahead and move on once the um, job is you know, done and over with, they've mm -hmm. decided to move on. So um, I interviewed with my manager and her manager first, both of us did, and then I had to uh, interview with HR. Um, interviewing with HR was kind of weird because this is our HR person and this was technically my first time ever meeting him. <laughs> uh, well, how long have you been with the company and did you always have the same well, it's, HR it's, person? It's, I've been with the company for a long time and this was, he's a new-ish HR person, but he's been our HR person for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, anywho, having said all that, um, I had my interview with him and Lauren was very much like she was still she was indecisive. She wasn't sure about things. She was very unsure, very concerned. She was not happy with the fact that she had an interview with with the um, HR person. So I go upstairs because my interview is in the morning. And when I come down, interview went fine. And when I come down, um, she tells me, um, just so you know, I um, 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 removed my application from the job so again like i said by process of elimination the job is mine yay yay <laughs> so um, or or it's, it's and uh, it's too bad or it's a good it's a good thing but not a good thing because it's it would be it's one of those things where yay you get the job but you didn't necessarily get it because you're the best person first <laughs> you're can the only one who say. applied you're the you're the only one that applied. You're the last one that applied. I mean, it's possible that that's the case, but whatever. Anyway, having said all that, cool. There's potential changes. There's definitely some increases and in some stuff, which is always good to have. And yeah, so there's that. Yay for that. Um, not too long after that, I had to go out of work for a couple of days uh, because as we've been talking, I've also been talking about, um, I had a colonoscopy uh, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> and I'm sure that was so much fun for you. Actually, honestly, the colonoscopy was, I don't even remember, literally. You don't, you, you, you are like knocked a... out. You're knocked out. You don't, you don't, yeah. Like literally, I. the last thing I remember is they wheeled me into the room um, the woman who's or the nurse that is doing the um, basically anesthesia, she explains to me that this is an anesthesia. It'll take about 30 seconds to take effect and it lasts like 20 minutes. Um, I will administer it as needed, you know, every 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes. I was like, okay, cool. So I saw her put the thing in the IV. Um, and and you, that's next thing, thing he I woke up. <laughs> last thing I remember is I'm waking up next to Jim um, in the recovery room. Um, um, a little sore, but not really sore. Did they have little... you count backwards? No, no. They, no. they put the idea and they started and this was 99, 90. No, no counting. They literally was like, we're going to put this in. They, they made you get into a comfortable position because you have to be on your side. And then 
she explains what's going to happen. And she said it's going to take about 30 seconds. And then, you know, she's going to be there to administer if they need it. I don't know how many often she did it. Maybe once or twice. doesn't matter. Um, I have a whole length of gap of time that I have no idea what happened. Other than, like, they obviously did the colonoscopy part of it. Um, and for many people, many people say for a colonoscopy, the worst part is the prep. And while that's true, I will say my experience was not that bad. Um, thanks to the doctor's office, um, the drink that I had was not nearly as awful as many people, the other ones that people have had in the past. There are some, if you remember back, like when Jim had his, there's like, you get like a gallon jug of like fluid that you have to drink. And it's, mm -hmm. I had to drink two 16 ounce, um, essentially glasses of this stuff. Um, once at 5 PM in the afternoon and once at four something in the morning. Um, again, not awful. Um, Cause you know, all the prep stuff, like I was on a liquid diet the day of, um, you know, that's the only thing that really sucked was like not eating anything. But I know why, cause <laughs> literally cleaning everything out <laughs> and the less you have in your body, the best, the better. Um, I appreciate a friend of mine who um, advised me to do baby wipes as opposed to toilet paper because, yep, that definitely helped. Um, you didn't flush the things, did you? No. no, no good, no, good, no, good, no. good. No. But it's one of these things where I had an opportunity. Flushable like was... wipes don't exist, folks. Just to say, flushable wipes, and I put those in quotes, do not exist. Well, Thanks, no Adam. I don't everything. Anyway, um, oh yeah. So and and the drink was a, like salty, but that was really it. <laughs> Kick, carry your face. <laughs> I think I, I think he's thinking about something else that's salty. All right. To be fair, <laughs> I am listening to you, but multitasking, and I am looking at Twitter. And so when David says the drink was a little salty, I was like, <laughs> you can call it a drink all you want. <laughs> Anywho. Um, and I mean, yeah, so other than that, it was, it was fine. Um, dealing with everything, getting everything prepped. Jim took me, we went and had lunch after everything was said and done. Um, funny, funny story. Um, while I was apparently still waking up, and I do not remember this, um, one, apparently, obviously, as you know, you're going up in your bowels and, and stuff, and they, sometimes you hit pockets of gas. Um, apparently, while I was still not conscious or semi-conscious, I don't, I don't really Knocked know. out. Knocked out. I let out a very loud rank fart, like in the recovery room, <laughs> in the recovery room very, well, it was there. He apparently heard it and was just very put off by it. Um, <laughs> in the recovery room. So not, not during the procedure. Correct. During the oh, okay. Well, because I, mean, I was just about to say. I mean, he was you, loosened up in there, so obviously well, I, any gas that may have been remaining one, probably had an easier okay. time escaping. Well, right. So here's the thing is I've I've had uh, probably upwards of 10 colonoscopies in my life. For those of you that don't know, short story, uh, was diagnosed with colon cancer, had a resection, had stuff removed. So mm -hmm. had, had had a bunch before, had a bunch since. So I'm very familiar with colonoscopies. But the thing was, I thought you were saying it was during the procedure. And I was like, well, it's butt stuff. Like, they're used to this. Like, it's a big deal. <laughs> and I was like, but you said about Jim. And I was like, oh, so this is a recovery. So for those that don't know, in order to be able to see inside of you, they fill you with air to blow up the inside of your, like, intestines so they could get good, you know, camera imaging and stuff. So... Unfortunately, Jim may not have been ready. <laughs> he was not ready. 
He because was not ready. <laughs> after a colonoscopy, they will not let you go home until you fart. Like, <laughs> they want you to, clinically, they want you to expel gas. Like, to get it out of your system, because they basically, and this is not true, but they basically kind of, like, fill you up full of air, look around in a camera, and get back out. The whole procedure honestly takes, like, maybe seven minutes. Mm -hmm. So, it's super fast. But, yes, when you, when you get out, it's air. It's trapped in the body. I gotta go somewhere, so. <laughs> it does, and it did, and it was awful. According to Jim, it was rank and... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how often do you clean up there, man? Uh, yeah. oh. Considering <laughs> your position often. in most things, probably not very often, if at all. Not that often. But no. that's not. But so you're not used to this sort of thing. <laughs> Anywho. Oh. <laughs> Gary is. <laughs> I have broken Gary. Well, here's the thing. So, like, you may want to consider, David, well, you should do this normally after you have a colonoscopy anyways, is to replenish your gut flora, like have some probiotics or mm -hmm. just yogurt, like, you know, things to kind of reset everything that's in there. Because it's one of the things about colonoscopies is that you basically irrigate uh like cleaning out in a way so that you have that's the whole point is well people like may find this disgusting or whatever it's like you have to remove all the ways so that you can visually see mm -hmm. what you're what not looking for and what you you know expect to see My. so yeah it's so yes it's it's one of those things that i'm, I, I'm just so abused by, by this now <laughs> as for the smell i cannot speak to that <laughs> that seems to be a personal thing um, but the, so I will own, like not own, but I will say this. So part of the thing, since I've had um, diverticulitis, one of the things that they have told me is that I need to increase my fiber intake. So I have been over since April, essentially increasing my fiber intake, eating, you know, vegetables, taking fiber supplements, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. One of the things that specifically says about increasing your fiber is that you will have more gas. You will have more like you know, you will have, oh, uh, what's the word? Something with bowels, but it's like you will have like. You might be more flexible. You will have plentiful bowels. You 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 will be you know, because of all the fiber, because you've got all this fiber, which is in whereas before you probably weren't eating as much or you you know having as much. Correct. So you're going to have all of this excess than you're used to. Eventually, your body will regulate, but it takes some time. Since it's been April, it's now July. It's only been a few months. Body is not quite ready. <laughs> Our body is ready, but anyway. Um, having said all that, um, yay colonoscopy. Um, they did find a couple of things. Um, the doctor told me um, that may have been the diverticulitis, but they took some biopsy to check it out. They almost always, they say that, According to people, I, when I talk about it on Facebook, everyone says that they almost always find something. And especially since I was in there for my diverticulitis, clearly they were going to find something. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't heard back from the doctor's office. Hopefully I will um, and figure it all out. If it's nothing it, or if, it, if it's what it, they thought it was, which was diverticulitis, then my diagnosis is complete and we'll just move on from there. If it Confirming. is something else. Confirming, right. yeah, con con confirming it. If it's something else, um, they mentioned Crohn's disease as a possibility, which, yay, whatever. Um, but if it's, you know, they'll probably let me know. I'm sure they will let me know. Uh, okay, with all of that being said. <laughs> now that I've, that, now that he's thoroughly embarrassed himself. Yes. Um, I did see the movie yesterday. Um, on the 4th of July, Jim and I went out, um, Jim had a day off and, um, we mm -hmm. happened to see this movie. We had been, both had been interested in the movie. We're both kind of Beatles fans, Jim more so than me, but I do like Beatles, meet the Beatles music. So I got to see this movie. Um, wait, 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 hold on, no hold on, hold on, pause. Which movie? Uh -huh. Yesterday. The movie is called Yesterday. Oh, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I so, got confused. Okay, so the movie is titled Yesterday. Um, and Which he general... saw 
three days ago. Yeah. <laughs> Not to make this any there more confusing go. or anything. There we go. The, the, the essential plot of the movie is there's a struggling musician. Um, there's a worldwide incident. And the very next day, um, the Beatle, the music and the Beatles never existed. So him having come from knowing all of that, that it, they did exist, he ten, he uses their music, their lyrics, their words to become famous. Um, Ed Sheeran, if you know from most recent radio stuff, is in the movie. It's a very interesting premise. Um, I will say this much. It's kind of fun and funny because it's not, not just the Beatles that's gone. There are other popular things from our world that are also gone. I don't want to spoil it, so you'll you'll see it when you, if you watch the movie, you will see these things. You'll and you'll laugh a little bit. Um, it's it was good. I don't want to say it was great. Um, I appreciated the premise. I think it was a very interesting take on the whole waking up in a different reality kind of thing. Um, I liked it. Um, if you're not a fan of the Beatles, you probably won't be as engaged. Um, uh, if you're not a fan of like, I don't know. I, the genre is kind of weird to place. It's it's a romantic comedy. It will fall in that. Um, then you're probably not going to like it. You can probably wait to watch it. But personally, seeing it in the theater was kind of nice. So, mm -hmm. yeah, they did a really good job with it. It's, it's very fun and very interesting. I don't think, um, if I were being honest, I probably wouldn't have necessarily, now seeing hate saying it, seeing it, I probably wouldn't have pay the money to see it in the theater but we we went on a matinee it was cool so um yeah got a discount it it's fine it's fine yeah it was good <clears throat> okay <laughs> it's scary i heard a review about it and the consensus was sort of in agreement with you like it's interesting take but uh if you're a diehard beatles fan you might very well be disappointed. It's not that it's a bad film. It's just not meant for that audience. Like the idea behind it, I think for me is it's, it's taking something is to, to put it bluntly. Someone is essentially stealing someone else's music and taking, putting their name on it and claiming it as their own. Right. You kind of have to get that kind of thought out of your head, especially near the, like the beginning of the movie, to kind of appreciate what's going on. Because I'll just use this as an example because it's in the movie. So the very first, the very first um, song he does is "Yesterday," right? Mm -hmm. So he is. Um, he so the the main character has been in in a accident at the same time that this whole like all the lights in the world went out for like twelve seconds. That's so little bit of a spoiler. That's kind of the thing that happens. All the lights all over the world go out for twelve seconds and then come back on, and that's where everything changes. Don't ask me what it means. It's not explained. Whatever. He has an accident. Um, his friends, you know, meet up with them and they give him a guitar as like a present, you know, for, I don't know, getting out of the hospital. I don't anyway. Um, and he plays the song yesterday and he sings it and they are so like taken by how beautiful the song is. But for them, they're hearing it for the first time. Right. For him it's like a classic and he kind of goes on this rant about it but it's just like you have to take in that moment like that's the whole premise of the movie is that right no one knows these songs at all right mm -hmm. so yeah 
Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> yeah. Right. So Help move right along. I, I, I think it's difficult if there's a known uh, existence to check all the marks. Mm-hmm. It's far easier to to manifest something out of nothing and for people to just take the journey because they're like they don't know. They're like, what are the rules? What is this world? Like, what is all this stuff? Like, it's far easier to do that than to be like, but you forgot about this and you didn't mention this song and you didn't do this thing right. Da, 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 you know what I mean? And so mm-hmm. I think that's it's difficult because we live in a world now where since we birthed the Internet, everyone feels that they have right to apply their opinions to anything at any time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm doesn't matter what it is so yeah, yeah. Having it's said so, that, yeah, interesting yeah it's interesting i'm not gonna say like I, if you want to see it go see it like i'm not yeah. gonna knock you for not for seeing it i'm not gonna knock you for not seeing it it's a movie it's decent um yeah like having digested it a few days <laughs> i kind of yeah i know <laughs> um <laughs> I kind of appreciated it, but not so much. I would have probably liked something different. I understand. Okay. All right. That's me. Sorry about that. That took a minute. A lot. That's okay. Anyway. That's the whole why. That's the whole reason we're doing a whole show now. Uh, to get Gary, how caught are up you? with each other. Um, I'm okay. The only thing I wanted to say in, in regards to earlier about when you made the comment about with the colonoscopy that they find things. Um, what most people don't know is that uh, the current American diet most likely will lead you to have uh, little polyps in your large intestine. Um, so that's usually what they ended up like removing, and they just test them to make sure that there's nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. Also, the polyps eventually become tumors if they are left unattended. So that is why it is recommended that everybody, once they turn 50 or maybe sooner, have colonoscopies every mm-hmm. so often. Um, I was an anomaly at my age to have had it done. Um, so, well, I had, I'll just say it like this. I had uh, blood in my stool and it was, you know, not a expectation. It was a, an amount that was alarming. So hence, go have colonoscopy, see what's going on. Oh, ta-da! Guess what we found? So, <laughs> uh-huh. Um, so it, it took yeah. me on a whole journey and did a bunch of stuff, and which is perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I don't want people to feel like to have an expectation when they go in that there's absolutely going to be something. There may, there may not. But yeah. don't freak out. You know, the whole point of it is it's to me, it's like testicular and breast exams. Like, just go get it done. Mm-hmm. There are parts of it that are not necessarily enjoyable. Damon has been blessed with what what sounds like one of the best preps like I've heard of to date. <laughs> I have done I have done the gallon thing several times. I have done less than that. Um, what I never knew was when it comes to this, what you have done as prep is decided by your doctor, mm-hmm. which I find crazy because mm-hmm. I'm like, why can't y'all get a consensus? <laughs> But I found so, out that some can we doctors, get standardization in this process. Well, some doctors like to be very, very, very thorough. So they give mm-hmm. you like you're going to take these docalaxes before at this hour. You're going to take this thing at this thing, and then you're going to do this thing. Like, and so you basically spend twelve hours prepping, which is insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then other doctors are like, not. I don't want to say as thorough, but and this is not intended as a pun. They're not as anal. Um, <laughs> like nurses have actually said to me, they've they've worked with different you know colonoscopy doctors, and they've actually mm-hmm. said some people are really particular about you being super clean. Yeah, but I think that may be changing in trend because in order to be super clean, you are. Um, I always think of it like uh, as an analogy, like house plumbing. Mm-hmm. Like when you are born and you come into the world, you're like intestinal GI tract is clean as a whistle. It's brand new, like mm-hmm. a brand new house has been built. But then over time it changes like everything does. But then if you go through it, you wrote a rooter the hell out of it and take everything out, then especially when it comes to our body, like then you're back to base again. And then you got to like kind of take care of it. And do mm-hmm. stuff with it. So I think that's why there's a trend. Doctors now are not as like 
you know, like focused on you being like super clean. Yeah, just, just clean. Uh, yeah. So there is there are other options out there for those that don't know. Besides just this, like drinking the liquids and are taking the Dulcolax and all that stuff, there are other options. There's a, I forget what it's called, but there's a Hydrox Hydro one that essentially you need a day of. However, it is not covered by insurance. Um, they they had it when I went for the consultation. They had like up, like ask your doctor about this, and I'm like, oh, let me look it up first because I want to know more about it because I don't do that shit just blindly. Um, it is a, it's essentially a, for lack of a better term, a, a very thorough enema um, that is done in a tub or what have you. And they basically, it's the done the day of and they clean you all out with water um, that kind of gets sprayed up in you and you release it all out every, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, as I said, it is not covered by insurance, however. Therefore, um, you would have to pay probably full on costs for it, which right. doesn't sound like much, but if it's two hundred, three hundred dollars and you're already gonna have to pay for the procedure itself and everything else, mm. just do the drink. It's right. really not that hard. Um it, in a way, a lot. Of, it depends on a lot of things. Like, what is your insurance? How is that st stuff set up? Mm -hmm. And, like, if you have a, a medical insurance program with a health savings account mm -hmm. yeah. for related things that may not be covered, that's an example of how, like, you could personally decide and be like, I want this thing. It's not going to be covered, but I can pay it out of this account. This is mm -hmm. just a generalization. Don't nobody be quote me on this shit. Yeah. Um, no pun intended again. Uh, then... You just, you know, go in and yeah. choose to have that thing. So just be aware that, like, because I've had family members and they, like, have told horror stories. And then, again, some people, they're just dramatic. Also and true. I'm kind of like, and what bothers me more than anything, I'm going to get off my soapbox and move on. We're gay men. Like, most gay men are involved in butt stuff in some fashion. So true. take your butt serious. Get it checked out. Like, you know. It's it, it's not that big a deal. I'm gonna so totally hashtag butt stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and it's literally gonna be in our tags as hashtag butt stuff. Okay. Yeah. Now that I just spit up all over. Not myself. just butt stuff and... as a tag. It's gonna be hashtag butt stuff. You're welcome. All one word. <clears throat> okay. Um, Maybe that should be the subtitle of this episode. What's going on? Hashtag. June 2019. Hashtag butt stuff. Speaking <laughs> with Gary. Gary? <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading the live chat. Uncle Gary says, check your old butt. Go see a doctor. All right. <laughs> um, so uh, the month of June for me, uh, the only thing that really stands out to me just uh, beyond the day-to-day, -day, as I said, new stuff is rough. And the reason why new stuff is rough is because I'm starting a new project at work. Because I wanted something more challenging. Mm -hmm. And I got it. So Yay! Weird. In <laughs> abundance. <laughs> that's a quote from a movie, and I can't remember what that's from. But I'm pretty sure it's a woman that says it. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, so the new project is interesting. Uh, it's just overwhelming the amount of detail and information that's included. I feel like the training program uh, was <laughs> not the best and most optimal. And yes, I'm usually hypercritical, but this is just one of those things that I was like, yet again, there's another thing we didn't go over. And thanks for all this printed material that we haven't touched. Um, so yeah, it's... Aww. It's... <laughs> it's <laughs> It's been interesting. I'm more concerned about other classmates because we're the launch of the project and we're doing relatively well, but I feel that other people are just really overwhelmed and maybe leaving the project like and just saying no and going back to what we used to do because mm -hmm. what we used to do was far simpler and easier to, to handle. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, mm -hmm. Just going to kind of stick with it and see where things, um, you know, where that where that happens out at but yeah so i mean it was that was kind of the big thing for the month of june i mean there was pride at the end of the month well i did pride with drew and columbus uh pride at erie you know yeah that kind of stuff so at pride with like aj and 
through, right? Yeah, they came in to, for Erie. So we uh, talked about Drench Fur and promoted it and saw a bunch of friendly faces. Uh, so here's the thing about this. Like, uh, David, I don't know if you've noticed this. Like, well, the Game Ends course doesn't really have a booth at, at Cincinnati Pride, do they? We do. We have a booth. Okay. We have a booth. We've had a booth, I should say. In the well, when in the whenever you've had a booth, did you ever man it like as a volunteer? Yeah, hour? Yes. Mm-hmm. So I'll just say this because maybe you could relate to that. <laughs> People come up and talk to you, and you're like, "Hi," blah 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 blah. And George is interesting because you know it's Pride, so it's everybody. It's like young and old, and and you know mm-hmm. all the spectrums of how you identify yourself and all that jazz, which isn't that big a deal. But it does make it interesting when you get asked about individuals attending who are not the demographic. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have to be 21 and over, you know, so there's little kind of verbal delicate dances in a way. Yeah. Um, are you explain things? Uh, and then it's also called drench fur. So then some people who may be furries or people who have pets might get a <laughs> confusing notion until you actually talk to them <laughs> about it. So that's the thing. We're talking about <laughs> our fur being drenched. Yeah. So that aside, our suits. Um, the interesting thing this year was I was like, who, who, where, where are all you men coming from? Because there was a whole bunch of men this year. I was like, hey, like, <laughs> <laughs> there was some nice looking guys, you know? And I was like, I don't recognize you. Like, I don't see you from like an app. At least I don't think I do. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> some of you look single and ready to mingle. Some of you look like, you know, you're, you're committed and, Maybe open. I don't know. So <laughs> I have hopes, you know, for <laughs> people coming to the event this coming year that like might be more local ish, but I don't know where they're from. Like I, you know, I didn't get demo on them. I wasn't, was, you know, like, do you live in the county? Do you live in another state? Like, I don't know where they came from. So it, it was, uh, it was interesting. It nice. is interesting. The different kind of people that you encounter at depending upon obviously what you are. Um, meaning like, for example, the men's chorus, while it's clearly Cincinnati men's chorus, we had, you know, women, we had female identified people coming up to the booth and asking questions and talking about it. And again, it's one of those things where you have, like you said, you have to have to tiptoe this little dance, you know, of like, you know, well, maybe you have a friend who can come join the chorus or something along the line or always, 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 we always say like volunteer our 10 because, if nothing else, like maybe you can come see a show. Um, but it was we had. Oh, I wish I could remember. Was he asexual? They were asexual. Mm-hmm. Um, they had like flag draped around them. I'm pretty sure it was asexual. The asexual flag. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, and it was just very interesting. Um, they were like. Well, I don't know if this would work for me or I could do this. And at first I was just like, well, you know, if you I had to, you know, I was explaining because we've recently gone through some issues. I said, if you identify as a male, you can you can sing with the chorus. And he goes, oh, that's not what I meant. He was like, he works second shift. He's always, you know, da da da. And I was like, oh, oh, like I had because I, I, I was about to start down that like not tirade, but that train of like. You were, you were just trying to cut him off at the pass for one thing, but it wasn't that mm-hmm. thing. You didn't need to cut him off. Just let him go. Sometimes yeah. that's what you need to do. You just say, Sometimes just it. just let him go. And when the issue comes up, then you address it. Yeah. Don't don't try they cutting did, him off. Right. Just 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 put up the stop sign. They did. Um, I, it was because like right before I had like. Um, um, A, a trans woman um, come to the booth as well. And it was just, just, you know, again, like it's those kind of conversations that you have to have. Um, so, but again, like I, I agree with you 100% Gary. I have, there are some people that I have never seen before in my life. They're ish related that I'm like, who that? Like, like I, I don't, are you? Like, <laughs> David's a growler on the on the sites on the on the net on here like because I did that on growler are you grinder I did it at pride I was like 
Growler? I jumped on. I jumped on Growler, and I jumped on. Uh, what else did I jump on? Did I jump on Scruff? I don't think I jumped on Scruff. I was just like, I was looking. I was like, "Are you so many feet away from me?" Like, <laughs> how many, know, fe- how many feet are you away from me? Are you? Are you on phone mm-hmm. motions? I keep forgetting you can't see me sometimes. Okay. So yeah, that was uh, that was kind of it. This month is um is a convention trip with my dad so that's and work for the most part you know that kind of thing at least two months more of overnights i knew that okay all right so are we ready to move on uh i think so but before i do that i want to do this and then this and then this and then then I'm going to say it's time for this. Oh, sh- God damn it. <laughs> Gary, what's been going on over in the Facebooks? All right. So in Facebook, we got three new likes. Uh, Stephen Maxwell, Anwar Lord Sire, and a individual who... Wrote their name in Thai, and it means able to stream. So, we want to thank all three of you for liking us on Facebook. And apologize, we don't know how to pronounce it in Taiwanese. Yeah, not not fluent by any means. Imagination, I got to take a stab at it. Um, also, uh, in Instagram, uh, I can't see something. There we go. Uh, we have a new follower, Braun Party. That's B-R-O-N. Braun Party. So thank you for following us on Instagram. Yay! Yay! Over in the Twitterverse, uh, we have J-K-I-Y-K-V-G-I. Uh, Pardue Jeffery. <gasps> he spells his name right. Uh, Cocky Kink. <laughs> uh, Sen La Pup. Or Sen, like Central L.A. Pup. Or Los An- uh, Louisiana Pup. I don't know. Uh, the talented Pen One, uh, Lucky's thirty one eighty nine, V I D A E U O R G. I'm not trying to pronounce that. Um, love you really mean it. Uh, Real Men Full Bush, uh, Ten Two hey. Dilly Dally uh, has has joined us over on the Twitters. And uh, so Gary. Hmm. Uh, well, what's this? What's wow. what? Wow. Okay. Um, what the, t- talk to us about the recent shows that we had this uh, back in <laughs> June. I got confused okay. because I saw something that I wasn't expecting. Was it a good surprise? Anyways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, back in the month of June, uh, we kicked off the month with uh, what's going on for the month of May. Then we did a flashback. Uh, to episode 215 called Black Shirt Friday. Black Shirt which you have to Friday. listen to the episode to understand why Black Shirt Friday was a thing for Jeff at that time. Because <laughs> that was the time we had Black Shirt Fridays. Yes. Uh, that's nice. I, I remember um, Black Shirt Fridays and, and approve your time card. Approve your time card. Okay. There were some fun times. Okay. Uh, then we had uh, episode 512 for the new-ish series called What Is. Uh, we discussed pride in uh, varying terms. And then the oh, next wait. week. Side note, quick, quickly here. I just noticed the week before was 215 and the week after was 512. They're palindromes of each other. Ooh, that's true. Or they're reverse not in, of each other. Not, not intentional. intentional. Yeah. No. Nope. The episode 215 was purely picked because it was six years ago. Something Started like to do around the same time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to the date. And then, uh, so after we discussed what is Pride, the next week was 50 years from now, episode 513, where we attempted to think like what our situation could be in 50 years from now. Not us personally as the three of us, but in terms of like the landscape of our community. And, you know, mm-hmm. do we think it would be positive, net neutral, or... Maybe not so great. Uh, and then last week was sort of a feedback show 
but it was uh, us responding to an email that we got and it's called Transparent Listener um, where we discussed like, you know, where we've come from, how we feel about things, the attempts that we're making to evolve and uh, respond to that. So also outside of that, we got a bunch of feedback responses in varying kinds or like fashions. <laughs> well, because like... <laughs> They they all come via email, but they all didn't start as an email, I guess is what I mean to say. Mm. So uh, that being said, um, Howard and had sent us a message. This, I think, was in May, and it didn't make the May uh, recap for some reason. So I don't know what happened with that. Uh, basically, he said, Pride Month is coming up. I want to talk a little bit about it. Uh, Pride can mean a lot of things to different people. Um he and they reference that they know that the holiday is more specifically concerning LBGT plus individuals, um, but wanted to talk on a personal note about the fact that for them, um, it relates to coming out, and that uh, it's just a really good story. I don't want to read the whole thing um, here because it goes uh, into some detail and stuff. But basically, um, it's really interesting how everybody has their own individual story. And mm-hmm. how they handle for themselves their own acceptance and how other people have impacts on that. Yeah. And so also they discussed about their neurodiversity and autism, which I thought was amazing. Mm-hmm. And the fact that... Um, opened up about that, which I didn't know this, so I'm taking this as as it's being said in this uh, message that we got, that suicide ideation is more common in those that are autistic. Um, and I appreciate them discussing this and bringing it up that I think we have a tendency, just as like just as human beings, to generalize. Like you look at a group of people and you're kind of like, you you have a sense of them even though you don't know them individually and so we make a lot of presumptions we probably presume a lot of people are right-handed we probably presume a lot of them like have the same capabilities of you know uh varying degrees and then you know awesome individuals like this reach out and they're kind of like hey like (laughs) here's the things that i've you know dealt with in terms of my personal journey and being anxious and coming out and you know what that uh, meads. And what I liked about it the most was that he said in the end, I take pride in the fact that I'm wired differently. And then said, by the way, the symbol for neurodiversity is a rainbow infinity, hmm. which I hmm. haven't seen yet. So I thought that was pretty awesome. So now if I see it in the future, I'll be like, I know what that is. Um, <laughs> Learn something new. Yeah. But I thought that was, um, it's really important, I think, to recognize that we're all different and we all have varying aspects of ourselves and that we don't probably out of, I don't want to say fear, but concern open up that much maybe and okay. talk about the differences between us um, because we're, we'd are we rather fit in than not fit in, which yeah. is so opposite at least in my upbringing you know there seemed to be this social messaging about you know be you be different be unique and yet every message that comes at you outside of that one is you should wear these jeans you should buy this drink you should do this stuff you should you know what i mean like the yeah the the commerce capitalism whatever mechanism kind of keeps consistently coming out and you and like you should have these products you should have this kind of home this is the type of relationship you should have you know what i mean like and so I've always found it a bit odd that we have direct opposite messaging that comes at us, you know? Yeah. And so I think what I like about pride and really about pride this year, I was proud of the fact that we overall made, I think a significant step notably because of Stonewall's 50th to be much more encompassing as pride overall in terms of like everyone's welcome at the table. It's not that we've solved anything, but I think we're just being much more um, open about it and recognizing that we haven't necessarily been that great about it in the past. So 
I thought it was awesome that, um, you know, Howard reached out to us and was like, hey, here's like some of my stuff that I've had to deal with, you know, mm-hmm. um, in that fact. So I think a lot of us are at different journeys and we just the more that we're open, the more that we talk about it. I think that it's it's pretty good that we we recognize that. So thanks for sending in your stuff, Howard. It's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, we'll also have the yes. entire email in the show notes, cubsoutloud.com. So if you want to actually uh, read it through, it's long. Uh, so, which is one of the reasons why we didn't read it, and we're not focusing the show specifically on it. Um, maybe something we might have in the future. I don't know. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Uh, let us know if you're interested. Just to see if we can move it up on our list. But uh, it is sounds like something extra that we probably should throw in someplace Mm. mark that as a topic idea all right what else do we got uh that this person uh is currently on his way to his canadian pride parade so he he can't be with here with us uh live but he will hear this (laughs) later (laughs) talk about like interconnectedness of the world uh in that case so uh damon you want to take the the email that we got um sure give me one second oh gosh all right uh oh oh gosh (laughs) Uh, you you, make sure you're you've scrolled down to the second one yeah that's what i have to do that's what i'm trying to do oh so it was from the the Transparent feedback show. So after mm-hmm. our transparent feedback show, we got an email from. Oh, we got an email from Mr. Chris Key. Yay! Mm-hmm. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, sorry, I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm the real, the okay. one person who Side... just shows up to the show, you know. Yeah. He does important Side... work, by the way. Don't don't think he's just here here to look pretty. He does work for the show. Just usually, it's <laughs> after the show. Anyways, <laughs> anywho, um, are we reading this? Yeah, it's not very long. Okay, so he says, gents, thank you all for doing this show. Um, I so greatly respect your willingness to be public and open about your learning and growth. It's not easy. The trans community is so important to me. Um, a close partner in um, parallel to CDC says a close partner is trans. Long story. And I'm always so happy to see continued growth in the acceptance and support of our trans siblings. Um, more learning for me, too. Some thoughts that crossed my mind while listening. Um, first thought, I think Jeff had a great idea. More trans porn. Lots of learning. Parentheses up close and personal. In parentheses. To be had with more porn. No harm. Lots of education. No one feeling under the microscope. I think a guest on the show to talk more about the trans experience is a great idea. And while I love Hadrian, I feel like despite... His breadth of experience, um, no shade. It should really be a trans masculine bear to discuss it in more depth. And then third, a podcast recently came out called Two-Headed Girl, where a trans masculine person discusses a lot of issues around their transition. The two hosts are great. Might not be the kind of focus piece that's helpful, but it's a wonderful personal show, wonderfully personal show. Anyway, just random listener thoughts. Thanks again for keeping me company. Best and Chris G. So thank you, Chris. Um, I agree with having a uh, trans bear or trans person um, to join the show. Um, We had our trans bear listener um, who commented, um, and I think that would be appreciated to maybe if he was interested in joining us on the show, that would be a really great kind of add on to it are other people we probably know by the way i did run into uh uh uh, a trans cub on pornhub (laughs) i was just about to get a link and then i'm like no that video my daughter start anyways (laughs) (laughs) so i stopped in the tracks just for good measure Well, thank you, Chris G, and thank you for the comments. It's always appreciated to get feedback. Yeah, um, and what he brought up about Hadrian, I think in the last episode we had mentioned about, um, like, 
Hadrian's breadth of experience just kind of as like a, an aside, not specifically that he would be the ghastly we would have on. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, given that uh, Hadrian's been out about the fact that he's, well, I don't want to speak on his behalf. I don't want to give him a label, but he is, I don't know how to say this now because I don't want to label it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> open to having sexual relations with like most individuals. I guess I'll put it that way. Um, <laughs> it's like it was awkward. Open-minded. Yeah. Um, so I think that like compared to myself who is, you know, see myself more in, in a specific box, so to speak, I think that's where that uh, came from. So the reason I want to bring that up is because he is planned to come back uh, for let's talk about sex but not related to this about something else. So I don't want people to feel like, you know, he's our go-to all the time uh, type thing. But if anybody has any suggestions about individuals that we should have on as guests, by all means, uh, shoot us an email that comes out loud, gmail.com or call us. (laughs) (laughs) Or you could do like uh, Patrick B did and uh, leave a comment on the blog. Yep. Uh, and I'm going to say which? this as kind of a teaser. It's just, Next on COL, episode 3133, <laughs> we hear Daddy Adrian read from his latest short story titled, Get Off My Lawn and Get Into My Craftmatic Adjustable Bed. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god! There, there was a parenthetical there saying fifty years from now in in twenty sixty nine, right? Because if you listen to that show where we talked about fifty years from now, we did diverge at one point and talk about if the three of us were still podcasting, we would be in a home together, putting on Cubs uh, Out Loud at that age. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the bear podcast of. <laughs> Oh, having said oh, that, having said that, uh, thank you, Boston Area Bear, for that wonderful comment. Yeah, uh, I forgot to turn on the sound sharing, but you guys can watch. Uh, it is now time uh, to get over these shenanigans and go into these shenanigans. <laughs> So I just want to make a, a short comment here. So joining us today in our live chat is actually one of my players on my D and D campaign. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, so Sammy, uh, I just want to say you might enjoy these pictures too. Uh, anyways, uh, my first uh, little Twitter one, I actually uh, retweeted, um, my comp but uh, uh I'm, I'm giving the link directly to it uh i said okay i'm impressed uh and um it's it's, it's how do i it's say a video this this, this video. position this sexual position has a title has a name i just don't know it because i'm not versed <laughs> in the kama sutra but i guarantee it's in that book somewhere <laughs> <laughs> so basically <laughs> like, like i don't know if it's reverse cowboy or what basically the the cub is lying down in missionary style with the jock on um not that that really matters in about the uh, positioning uh but the the top daddy bear uh is inserted uh but he's sitting down and he's he's like sitting down with his legs oh, apart and around the side of shut up siri um, <laughs> he, he's he's sitting down as if he was just sitting down like in the position that maybe he would get a blowjob in but instead uh he is missionary fucking this bottom cub so um uh-huh. being able to do that to me is impressive yeah yeah, yeah, yeah i mean uh, I'm, I'm sorry. As I'm looking, I'm looking at the steel. I've seen the video. I've watched it already. Um, <laughs> um, it's 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 actually not that awful a position, dependent upon the 
angles. Here, here, here we are with with uh, Damon's analysis of sexual positions. Yeah, <laughs> or analyses with you know, Damon. You right? know, you know, that could either be that could be like a one of those like like a, a new podcast that's like a short podcast. It's not very long. It's just there's a link to a video of somebody doing position. You do an analysis. It could work. Um, anyway, but yeah, although I mean, knowing I'm, you, it would still be an hour long. But that's beside the point. It'd be long. It would be long because I ramble apparently. Um, anywho, um, yeah, time. but yeah, just it, it. It's not. It's you know. I mean, he's got some thighs. As we see later on, he has some balls. Like yes, that's the part I am most <laughs> impressed by. See, Big yeah. old pendulous daddy like hanging sack of nuts i saw yes. that <laughs> to I be fair I, the camera operator because their hand does not need to be in front of the lens as much as it is in exactly. this one minute and second moment but I, it, to be fair i didn't watch the whole video i was mainly impressed with just the initial positioning yeah and i do i can't remember what this position is called i have to think what it is i know this position i just can't i'm surprised you don't have the bear kama sutra or something or just the kama sutra in general don't mind me i can just look it up that's what google is for <laughs> but how do you look it up i mean how do you it's describe easy. that i well you don't necessarily describe it you just the sitting look, missionary like, pose you kind of have to look at the position and figure out what it might be. Okay, for the record, I'm using incognito mode on Chrome. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just don't want this coming up like in, in all my stuff all the time. I mean, that's probably not... No, that is not the name of it. Okay, no. just for your record, Cosmo has an article about the five disability-friendly sex positions you need in your life. I did not know this existed. I want to give oh. a little applause to Cosmo for having such an article because that's pretty amazing. I think I found it. I just need to, if it has a name. Okay. According to Cosmo, and this is totally not official, they say that position is called the Apex. Ah. But I disagree because they keep focusing on the fact that it's a spot uh it's about uh, it's about a binary. It's about a cis man and a cis woman being together. So yeah, but the position like, is like I'm trying to look at the as I look through pictures. I think I thought I found it, but that's not quite it. So would it and be? Then... So would it be the gay pex? Maybe. <laughs> like I can see it. Okay. So here's the thing. Looking at obviously like general Kama Sutra, I can see the I can see the position, but what I'm not seeing is a name. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna waste any more time trying to find it. But kudos to this guy and the these guys doing this position. It's very it I will admit it probably is a lot more difficult for say, you know, a larger man to do this position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that's another thing. Is is I'm impressed because not just because of the position in and of itself, but also these are chunky guys. These are nice, hot, chunky guys. So wait a minute. I gotta go back and all right. Start at the beginning of the video. I need to see the position again. <laughs> I currently have it frozen on my screen. So, so do I. <laughs> I'm actually going through a visual of Kama Sutra positions that are like drawn out, uh, and I'm I don't know. I about didn't mean to go in this tangent. By the names. way, welcome, welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the city of Pan. Other tangents, like duh, like you, you, you gave me a challenge, Jeff. <laughs> I did not hey. give you a challenge. I was just showing you something that I was impressed with. Okay. All right. All I'm gonna say. To be is, fair, my challenge now is to see big boys in the mermaid position. <laughs> the Wait, mermaid position. I don't know that position. <laughs> you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to show us a picture of that one. <laughs> Oh my god, what have we done to the show? It's been totally derailed. Well, actually, it's like I have the link to the next one just in the chat waiting to be talked about. But you know, it's relatively uh, easy to describe. So the top is laying on their back, on you know, on a flat surface, 
and the bottom is uh, riding them face away. However, the bottom is holding their legs up together like they're in a V shape. Yeah. I'm like, okay, then. So that's, that's a thing, apparently. It's like uh, high horseback. Or high cowgirl, or whatever. Yeah. Well, reverse cow. So reverse cowgirl is essentially when they face away from you, like they're riding you and they face away. I do know that much. Right. So would so, this be be the same thing as that, except instead of the legs being, <laughs> the nave, it would be it would be up in front of them, right? Yeah. Don't, I don't. Yeah. So uh, would it would it be this exact same position, just like the top is lying down instead? No, it would be have no, to be reversed. No, no, it would be different. And you can't even see the hand gestures I'm making. On this. No, we cannot. My heels and my hand are their connection. All right, I don't and know. I'm who swiveling around these positions. Wait, uh, wait, wait! Did I just pass it? Go back. <laughs> Anywho, what have I done? Um, you have yes. done. You have done what you needed to do. Hey, hey, G- hey, David. What I will move did on you from mine. I will use mine because it's it's really the same thing. So, um, <laughs> did you just say it's really the same thing? It's not really the same thing. Oh, okay. So, um, I mean, it is a guy in a bed, but you don't get to see. It's just a guy in a bed. Um, right. So, one of our previous um, guests on the show. Um, has a very um, sex positive Twitter page, and I happen to find this very wonderful picture of him. Um, so, this is from our, our fan, our friend, um, Jeff Leval, um, our Lavelle. Ah, uh, I know who you're talking about. It's called Anticipation, and it's his ass up in the air in a bed um, with pillows underneath him. I mean, you don't see his face per se, but it's him. Like we, we if if memory has served, he is again quite sex positive, and he is showing off his assets. He does have a beautiful ass. I'll say that. He does mm-hmm. very furry, very lovely. And this was just one. Like there were. A bunch of other ones that I found recently, which I reblogged. So if you follow me on Twitter, pup underscore Umbra on Twitter, um, you will see these because <laughs> for a minute I caught a few of these. Go over to porn section <laughs> and make sure I'm following them on there. Follow. Okay. There's videos too. Yes, he does. He likes showing off his butt. That's for sure. He, well, yes, he does. I'm a fan of Who? this. Go back. There we go. All right, back to this. I'm still looking. <laughs> well, I think um, mm. I sent you two close. positions in the chat, but I don't know if I think 65 is the closest, but not quite because the guys, <laughs> the other one is. The, the the top needs to be like up, like, like on arms. Ah, I think I found it. Uh, okay. What position <laughs> is it? Wait t- wait till you see what the name of it is, though. Oh Jesus <laughs> Christ! Kind of funny. <laughs> is that uh, it? Mm, yeah. Kind of. I mean, that's close-ish. Close-ish, kind of. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I suppose that's closest. Deja vu. <laughs> My question is: is is position sixty nine here actually sixty nine as we know it, though? No. Okay. Well. They have they have names. Like everything has a name. Like I just saw the watering can. Okay. Like that's where some of these names. Are. The praying man. So this. Whoa. Is, this, is this actually from the okay. the actual Kama Sutra, or is this just somebody making a list of sex positions? It probably is. Probably not. It's not the official Kama Sutra. All right. Because I doubt they had a Kama Sutra called Reverse Cowgirl. Just. Oh, it's uh, apparently uh, 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 
Mr. Futsu's husband, Eric, uh, just downloaded a gay Kama Sutra app and found that uh, this the position we're, we're researching is a variation on something called fusion. Okay. Mm. I love the fact that our audience is this interactive, that they're... <laughs> Re- researching this. Okay, okay. Can, can we get back on topic? Golden Gate. I want you both to look at the Golden Gate and tell me, like, how possible that is. Uh, it, it's very difficult. Is all I can say. Good lord! What the <laughs> fuck? Can I? Roll it requires a, a lot of flexibility. <laughs> or flexibility, like that's going to be I a mean, dexterity you, tech you, for sure. Yeah, it, 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 that's a high DC. I will tell you that. Yeah. That's at least a twenty. They, yeah, you you literally you literally have to quit or, or crit on this to even do it. I don't care how high your dex modifier is or any bonuses for acrobatics. Just, you will not. I, just, yeah. I understand right. you're proficient in acrobatics, but even with the plus nineteen with your expertise, is you're only getting this if you roll a twenty. Oh no, no, it's not twenty that, on that. the die. It's not that difficult, but it is difficult because it's very, very hard. I mean, think. I mean, I mean, it's difficult for the <laughs> one who's on top. I mean, you would have to to stack abilities here, so you would have to have a high dex, uh, uh, and maybe have a magic item which uh, helps increase your dexterity score. Um, uh, you probably an advantage. Probably an advantage role. Uh, maybe somebody canceling uh, casting enhancing ability uh, cat's grace, which is oh my uh, god dexterity. Uh, no, no, that's just advantage. I think can't remember the role. Anyways, yes, I'm starting right to think off. of how to do this in D and D terms. Gary, what did you pick? Um, what did you sorry. find? Which. I'm... <laughs> so lost down the rabbit hole of sex positions. Yeah, you are ruining my life, Gary. <laughs> or enhancing it. I think this website is giving you some things to consider. I, I, I don't say. see the problem with this. <laughs> I literally don't see the problem with I this. I have some thoughts and some problems with this. <laughs> Whoa! Hold up. Go back. <laughs> wait a minute what all right i have never seen this in my life what i just want you uh, to think uh, about that i've already moved on <laughs> well i haven't i am still searching for the oh exact jesus position. christ <laughs> no that's not even possible man <laughs> that's why i was like whoa i mean well i suppose if it's anal yeah, it nope. says rear entry is one of the, the tags. <laughs> that still doesn't necessarily mean that it's anal. It's oh, it does say anal sex. It, Never it's, mind. Yeah, it's, that's the first tag. There, there, oh, okay. There's tags in there. There's rear entry, anal sex from behind, etc. Okay. <laughs> wow. So apparently the hill um, it also involves some acrobatics. I don't think it would be as acrobatic as the other one, but still. I love how the other foot is like. <laughs> it's a balance like down, thing. So not smacking her in the face. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Gary is now broken. Oh, wait. I Can, I we, can we talk? A- I might have found a cousin oh, from the one Christ. that we've been trying to find. Um, <laughs> Gary. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay. I've seen that one. All right. Gary, focus, focus. Ridiculous. Don't make me turn this podcast around. <laughs> Gary, please close out of sexpositions.club. Uh, that looks nothing like a dragon. Anyways. <laughs> Can we can we talk about can we talk about this drawing? Um, all right. What did I pick? I forgot. Uh, oh yeah, it's called "Yep, Nothing Is Sacred." Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm still not finding any problem with this. Okay, right. So here's the thing. Um, I have never thought about the Care Bears like this before in my life. (laughs) These are the Care Bear cousins too. 
I mean, you see Care Bears in the background, like looking on. Well, you see Care Dirty Voyeur Care Bears in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but, but you know, the centrally located ones. Right, is Lionheart and. Uh, I I think this must Walker. be one somebody made up. I don't think that's a. This is Braveheart Lion. No, Loyal Heart is a, is is. A, oh yeah, there is. A, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. The the lion, yes. Yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. is one. And Loyal Heart Dog. Oh. Yep. Um, Okay. It's been oh a my god! Yeah, there were, there were, there were. Anyway, so I will, I can, as someone who was a fan of the show in the '80s, who is now scarred for life. Um, <laughs> um, I, 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 yeah. I wouldn't call this scarred. I would call this enhanced. But you know, I'm older, I, wiser, hornier. I need <clears throat> therapy. <laughs> you do. We we've I, already, we've known this I for need, a long time. I need, right, I need therapy for many reasons, but <laughs> I have a I have a confusion about like sexualizing like um, animated like characters only because like in this case like non real. Well, definitely they're all non real. Anyway, see this is why I need therapy. Um, because there's a part of me that's like, oh, what a cute cartoon. Wow. Like, that's really. <laughs> Penis. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the world of furry. It's um, strangely alluring. I say strange because I don't know what other word to use. I'm like, all right. Big old daddy lion. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Big old daddy lion. Like. Like the okay, so like there there are parts of this that are just like that's why it's hurting me, because like <laughs> he's there, he's like stroking his whiskers, like what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> they suddenly have nipples through their like fur, like it's it's it's. I mean, if you start adding a little bit more realism, just a little bit more realism to it, mm-hmm. since they are anthropomorphic, they would probably have some nipples in there somehow. Yeah. Just be all covered in fur, and these are just hard or something that they're poking out of the fur. I don't know. Well, I'll say, I was going to say this. If you're going to give them genitalia, nipples is not that far a reach. Yeah. I know. Um, I'm aware. Doesn't mean I like it. Right. <laughs> Damon, yeah. not as open minded as the rest of us. Anyway. I am pretty open minded. I just this is just like I said. No, this is said. too far. Go. You're not I, I didn't say you weren't this open minded. Is... I did said you weren't as open minded. I'm like, I have no problem with this. That's uh, because you want to be the lucky dog. Was it rule thirty seven or rule thirty four? One of the two. Rule thirty four. Okay. Yeah. Everyone will look uh, at the camera. <laughs> And care about cousins again the same way. And I know this probably isn't the first time I've seen this. If so. it exists, there's porn of it. So mm-hmm. just rule 34. 34. Or 43. 34. 34. 34. I just Googled. Yeah. All right. So I got a question about these other positions. Oh, Jesus I Christ. did not close that I... browser. Do some people just like, do they like fall during sex and like they still have sex? I... <laughs> just saying like some of these positions i'm like how do you intentionally get into that spot that's the part i don't understand i'm just most of these anymore i'm just gonna be like over here Makes sense. Waiting for you cool alone. oh for the love of everything there's a position called a spork <laughs> okay all right on that note let's go into to links no gone to the links um, so as I said, I've been doing a lot of uh, D and D. Jesus Christ, Gary! <laughs> <laughs> if saying. anybody wants to look up what what, what Gary is perusing through, <laughs> it is sexpositions.club. <laughs> Free advertisement for the site. <laughs> Anyways, it's it, 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 it has models and different. Positions. Anyways, moving on. Uh, so uh, uh, we're doing D and D stuff, um, and starting back in fourth edition, uh, Chris Perkins, one of the people who is currently uh, one of the writers for D and D itself, uh, 
uh, started DMing for uh, the folks at Penny Arcade in PvP uh, web comics, um, and in that they created uh, a adventuring group, which he, he they ended up kind of making into a company called Acquisitions Incorporated. They did a podcast. They did live shows uh, at PAXs. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, PAX East, West, South, Unplugged, uh, West, etc. Um, and well, the uh, Taiko Brahe, uh, or in Acquisitions Incorporated, he is a um, uh, uh, Menifis Horrier drawn, um, the CEO of Ac Acquisitions Incorporated, uh, otherwise known as uh, Jerry Holkins. Uh, he ends up playing some Dungeons and Dragons with his friends and they are the C team for Acquisitions Incorporated. And there is a series of podcast videos and they stream it, I think every Thursday. Um, and uh, I'm going to link the playlist of the game videos. They also have a, a table talks afterwards where they kind of talk about mm -hmm. the game and stuff, stuff kind of like an after show sort of thing. It's it's the Tox Machina of Acquisitions Incorporated, the C team. So, hmm. uh, if you you know the the reference, except it's not like a the whole like talk show sort of thing. It's just after game kind of moratorium torum of the night session. It's mm -hmm. kind of fun. So, and it's this is this is comedy D and D. Versus yeah, yeah. the the serious, it's it's not, it's not your critical role, <laughs> mm -mm. but it's still fun. It, it, it's still fun and enjoyable and uh, hilarious, um, or, or at least I think so. So it's for, so I would say say if you don't if you're not into the seriousness that is critical role, check out Aquasis Incorporated. <laughs> Check out their PAX games. Uh, some of it's on the D&D YouTube channel and also on the Penny Arcade TV YouTube channel. So they're out there. Cool. Yeah. Damon, what do you got? Um, so speaking of 80 cartoons, thanks, Gary. Um, we, I have, like, within the last week, I just kind of randomly have found these two videos and um, it is 10 80s cartoons that lasted only one season. Um, there's two parts to it. Um, it is a um, YouTuber. I forgot her name as I, I was here trying to listen to it um, by the name of, come on, load for me. Thank you. Laura Legends, excuse me. And she essentially, she's created a lot of videos, I believe, but these are the two that I found um, in particular, which are essentially 1080 cartoons that only lasted one scene. And she says, wonder why afterwards, but um, it's some very weird. Some of them were weird, some of them were odd, but if you're an 80s, you know, if you're a kid in the 80s, you saw, probably saw some of these cartoons and wondered why, like they disappeared after one season. Well, you might know why if you watch this video, these videos, it's two parts. Enjoy. It is interesting, to say the least. To say the least. Nice. Yeah. I mean, I'm keeping it short and sweet because it's we're going long. Not not any fault of mine. <laughs> These two knuckleheads. Anyways, moving on. Uh, I just have three Netflix picks uh, because I took some time for self care and wanted to like get back into watching Netflix because I abandoned it for a couple months, not intentionally, mm -hmm. but it just had shit going on. Obviously, yeah. uh, Stranger Things three came out on July fourth. Watched it, binged it in one night. Uh, Hoop, uh, Hooper as the dad bod shower scene. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Yeah, like saw people <laughs> post about it on Facebook. They were like, why is nobody talking about this? And then what made me laugh was the cold comment with thread was, I know, right? Oh, my God. Blah, 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 like all this stuff. <laughs> it, it was like it was like you played it and, you, and you're like, oh, uh, scene's over. Rewind. Watch it again. What? 
Rewind. Watch it again. Rewind. It's Watch again. not as good as the picture I posted in Telegram uh, where he looks a little heavier, in my opinion, and better. But that was that. Was that. Oh, um, I'm not going to spoil anything for anybody about Stranger Things Season 3. I was not emotionally as moved as other people have been about it. Uh, some big shit happens in the end of the season. It appears I, I haven't looked it up yet. I'm presuming they're already good to go on a fourth season um, because of where they left it at. I mean, technically they could not return, but I think a lot of people would be disappointed because <laughs> they want to know more. They're hi- highly invested in the show. So, hmm. yeah. Um, Marvel's Jessica Jones, the third and final season came out this year on Netflix uh i enjoyed it i actually found myself i paced it out over several nights and watched it and i really liked how things went i never read the comic so i'm not that type of a person that's like you know about them straying from storylines and stuff i will say however there is a guest cameo of another marvel character in the series that shows up and i was really irritated by it because it was super obvious that like it was kind of you know i'm here for a very specific reason Nice. <laughs> Why are we completely disregarding like their existence otherwise, except for this one brief moment or one episode? <laughs> so I was annoyed by that. And then uh Tales of the City. So Armistead Maupin's classic story about Barbary Lane. It's been reinvented, uh slash extended as far as stories go. And I saw someone describe it as the Ellen Page queer as folk show. <laughs> And at first I was really irritated by that, but then I was like, mm, all right, <laughs> maybe. Like, I, can, well, I can see the reference. Like if, if all you know is queer as folk, like American queer as folk, and then you see this, I could see where you're drawing some parallels. Like it's about a group of people who are related to each other in some ways. And there's, yes, there's sex scenes. There are sex scenes. <laughs> that, in my opinion, look like sex scenes, like almost real sex. I was, yeah. When someone's getting slammed, two <laughs> men have sex. I'm kind of like, okay, that's okay. <laughs> so, um, but it was uh, it was interesting. I liked it. I'm glad that I watched it. I feel like you know, it was uh, something to enjoy. In that case, so mm-hmm. those are the things that I ended up watching on Netflix this. Uh, but I'm still getting caught up on stuff. I am literally just now catching up on uh, Grace and Frankie because I didn't mm. watch it the last season last year or earlier this year. Earlier this year. I think it came out in like in March or something. So, and then they're <laughs> scheduled for 2020 for another season. So there you go. Mm-hmm. Hey, guess what, folks? Oh, that's the end. Oh. But anyways, contact us, pop over to our website uh, at CubsOutLoud.com. Leave a comment on the blog, just like uh, 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 Mr. Peter Patrick B. did. Uh, you could also shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, sexy or otherwise, at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Uh, you can follow us on the various social media outlets at CubsOutLoud in the appropriate place of the URL. That's Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and right here on YouTube. Uh, you can join our entourage chat and chat it up and see pictures of uh, 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 chubby guys in, from Stranger Things at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. I couldn't find the picture. Um, you can also subscribe to our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col on a computer. Um, and once you have it on the, do it on the computer, then you <laughs> Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> what I think I finally found the position. Anyways, <laughs> keep going. You didn't have to say anything. You can get great merchandise such as uh, uh, the the uh, V three logo that Gary and I are wearing, both in white. We're both wearing semi matching shirts. Mine is sleeveless. This is a different material. And, this is the... Which I don't think is available right now. <laughs> oh, really? I don't Ooh. think it's available. I could be wrong. Um, the athletic t-shirt? Is that the, like, wick yeah, one? Yeah, it's or... the yeah. light moisture wick, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, we also have p- 
Pups Consent is my four play shirts as well as Bear mm-hmm. and uh, Leather Prides. Um, by the way, we should probably I should probably ask about that other one, which might be later. We haven't announced yeah. it yet. Um, and uh, all at zazzle.com slash comes out loud. Uh, you can subscribe to us on Patreon at patreon.com slash comes out loud. Thank you to the patrons we, we were, who just got uh, charged today. We thank you so, so much. It is very helpful to the cause to let us keep running this without having to break our pocketbooks. Um, at least every two years. And maybe be able to put it in the future soon here. Um, you can also rate us on iTunes, subscribe to us on Google Play Podcasts, uh, follow us on Spotify. Uh, you can find me anywhere in the internet as box at box puppy box gov box something or other. Uh, I am Theater Coach Seven Nine on most bear related sites or even Facebook, or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabriel Seventy Three. That's G A R B E A R Seven Three. And with that, uh, say good morning, everybody. Good morning. Right. Yeah, so I think it's funny that um, one of my uh, uh, players and the female Sorry. one decided to come watch the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the first, my first thought is awkward, but we've chatted about it. Everything, yeah. it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Need. Everything's fine. I love it. Thank you, Air, for looking at that. Um, Looking up the K Karma Sutra. Fusion. Fusion. <laughs> and yes, the uh, position I think you found, Gary, is the more, most appropriate one. The lock. The lock? Yeah, the last one, the last link that I just put in a moment ago. But the thing is, is that, so here's the thing that I'm realizing is like, Oh, yeah. Every position is so specific because you are literally where is every leg? Where is every appendage? Basically, where is mm-hmm. every leg? Where is every foot? Where is every hand? Where is every arm? Like where? Like literally, it's so detailed because yeah, like there's like sixty nine, but then there's like I don't know, like twenty versions of sixty nine apparently. Mm-hmm. So that's where I was like, really, okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna stop.